Hello, Tile friends. Welcome back to another episode of Tile Money, the podcast where I discuss the business of being a tile contractor. Tile Money is brought to you by the National Tile Contractors Association, and Blade Decree International is a sponsor. Today, I've got a great interview. I was able to catch up with Jason McDaniel. That was last week at Coverings, and we got into his business. And of course, we also discussed uh, the business he has on Facebook, his his group. Um, I shouldn't call it a business, but it is probably uh, close to a full-time endeavor. If you're on Facebook, uh, I would highly suggest jumping in his group, Global Tile Posse, where we discuss all things tile. Now, this was my second time getting to know Jason a little bit better in person, and I'm really enjoying uh, getting to know him and look forward to the future. So thank you, Jason, again for being a guest on my podcast. And friends, I wanted to remind you that at the end, we've got the third Tile Money Tip with Ron Nash, and this is a series. So again, this is number three in the negotiation uh, techniques and tactics. So if you want to catch one and two, if you missed it, go back to the episode that, that's titled Coverings. Uh, that's with myself and my wife. And then in tip two is inside of um, Martin Brooks, Heritage Marble. So friends, I'm enjoying getting to know all of you. Uh, please keep the DMs and PMs and uh, text messages and email and faxes coming. I'm really having a good time. Uh, you know, jumping on the phone with you, I'm happy to do it. Um, just shoot me a message and... Um, I, I really hope that this podcast is helping you grow stronger tile installation businesses. That's my uh, my sincere hope. So if it's not, if you'd like to hear me talk about um, something more specific, please let me know and I will get a, get a guest on the show that's an expert in that area. And we want to help you build up uh, strong tile installation businesses. This is good for you. It's good for the industry and it's good for the communities you live in. So until next time, friends, I hope you're having a great week. In Oregon, if you don't know him, he has a tile um, company called Stone Man. Yep, Stone Man Construction. Stone Man yep. Construction. Yep. How long have you been doing that? Uh, Stone Man's been alive for about, uh, this is my 12th year. 12 years? Yeah, 12, 12th year in business. For nice. Sure. Yeah. Right on. So we want to dig into his business and how he runs it, how he shows a profit, what it looks like today. But first, um, you know, you're also the creator of GTP. And I imagine that takes a lot of your time. And we really appreciate your efforts in there. It's yeah. a really great group. I'm, I enjoy it. I'm in it um, on Facebook. We're talking about the Facebook groups. Do you have any other hobbies after that? What yeah, do you I have mean, time for? Well, first, real quick, I want to yeah. give a little credit to Dave Bitten. I mean, yeah. uh, Dave Bitten was somebody who... You know, there's a few people that pushed this group to push to start it yeah. and Dave Bitten started it with me so for some reason I, I'm always the one that that well maybe it's because it's my face on there all the time yeah. that yeah. it looks like it's me that, that created Global Tile Posse but there was a group of people that kind of pushed yeah. uh, to, to start another group that, that we could do some more positive stuff um, so just want to give a shout out to, uh, to Dave uh, for that um, and, and, and also some other people that helped us out. So, Very um, cool. but as Very far as hobbies, cool. I mean, you know, I have a wakeboarding boat in the summer. I really enjoy, uh, sitting on the Willamette river in Portland. Um, I listen to a lot of audio books, which I've talked about quite a bit. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I try to get creative with tile at times, you know, create yeah. new things, try to do, uh, new fun things with tile and just, uh, try to stay positive and have fun. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a good life, brother. Yeah, it is. It's good. Nice, it's nice. good. Yeah. So let's dive into your, your company, Stone Man Construction. Yeah. Uh, what does that look like? How many employees do you have? And what are your roles? Yeah, right now we have, there's four of us. Um, my brother uh, is a huge part of our business. Okay. Um, we have Brandon Cook and Jeremy Bickett. Uh, nice. Jeremy's certified tile installer. Uh, Brandon is probably going to take the CTI uh, May, May 31st. Um, you know, the business has changed a lot. I mean, uh, I did things wrong for so long because I was taught wrong. You know, I have a, a stone fabricator's background. So when I came from solid surface and started doing tile, uh, I learned the wrong way. So it took, you know, six or seven years for me to, to, to learn that there was an industry out there for me that I could, you know, reach out and talk to representatives. And, uh, you know, I met the guys with Ardex and they, they've really helped me a lot to, to learn how to, to do proper, uh, you know, prep and uh, installation techniques. I got involved with the CTEF and the certification. Um, yeah. And I'm an evaluator for the CTF, and I'm also an NCCA ambassador. So I think 
that the industry has really boosted my business to, to, to become what it is. You know, we started scribing at some, some point down the line. I started doing some scribing right. and I think that's really helped us out a lot, you know, yeah. because you got to have, you've mentioned signatures. Yeah. That's something that I've seen you do a lot of that yeah. everybody needs to have something that sets them apart in this business, you know, because yeah. you can be a guy out there installing three by six subway, but what are you going to do that's different? What's going to get your phone to ring? Right. So yeah. the business is great. You know, we're, we're, I'm trying to grow, but yeah. I mean, the tile money is about things like that. You know, yeah. it's really hard to grow. It's hard to find qualified labor. Um, so, you know, right now my role, I set tile maybe 20, 30% of the time anymore. Okay. Um, Jeremy sets a ton of tile for us. He's really an incredible tile setter. Uh -huh. He's just really, really an amazing mechanic. Um, my brother has, you know, kind of grown into a, he, he kind of keeps things in line, uh, does a lot of grouting and silicone and prep and stuff like that. Okay. And then Brandon is new to us and he's a really young guy in tile three years in, but okay. he's got a ton of upside really good attitude, works hard. Nice. And uh, I'm, I'm definitely anxious to grow, but- How did you uh, find Brandon? Brandon was just, you know, I, I sent out a post on GTP saying okay. I needed some help. No way. And yeah, and a guy in Portland, Alex Nez, who works for uh, Columbia River Tile and Stone, he um, got in touch with me and said, hey, my, my buddy needs work. So Brandon came on board and uh, Jeremy came on board because of Global Tile Posse. Okay. Yeah. So, so your uh, crew is, is growing because growing. of your, your Facebook group. Well, we, awesome. I mean, I, yeah, for sure. I mean, Are I think Facebook helps. groups. Yeah, 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 absolutely. For sure. And out there and, and just putting the word out there and just saying, hey, I, I could use a hand. For you sure. Know? That yep. is awesome. Yeah. What's nice about that too is those guys are already dedicated to the trade. I mean, right. They're, they're spending their free time you know, we, we all want that helper that's as dedicated as us, you know? Yeah. I mean, maybe they want to check out at five and we can't, but at least when they're there, they're like, this is so cool. We're, yeah. we're pushing things, yeah. we're pushing the limits. Whereas if you get a guy off Craigslist or whatever, he doesn't want to do the scribe work because he, you know. It's, that might not be his thing. He could be he could be digging a hole, right. you know, as long as he gets paid. As long he as he gets care. paid. Yeah, yeah that really, is so cool. You got to find the guys that have the passion the for passion. it. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that's got to be challenging, though, to to kind of make that shift from doing things a little bit the wrong way, but maybe that was easier in a lot of ways, and to now like making this shift and like being certified, you know, yeah. going the extra mile. I mean, what challenges did you have making that shift? And and you know, I want to talk about that. Yeah, you know, I think the challenges are interesting. The challenges are really it's that thing where you you know you um, you start to do things right, and then you get a little bit frustrated. <laughs> That was awesome. That was rad. So let me, is yeah. it okay for somebody just to come take a hat? No, that's perfect. Man. I mean, <laughs> it's unbelievable. It is it is. I guess he just, wanted a hat. He, he wanted it bad enough to come interrupt <laughs> what we were doing. That was fantastic. Um, but yeah, you know, I think what it is is that once I learned that I was doing things wrong, you know, I have this, there's this part of me that I start feeling bad for, you know, all the jobs that I did that yeah. maybe aren't up to par. So, right, um, right. you know, I think I had, I, I felt inside that I really needed to rush to start doing things right. And then I needed to do everything I could to, to find a way to get the message out there that, you know what, you're not alone. I mean, if you're a guy that's out there that was taught wrong and you know, you've been doing things wrong for a while and yeah. you don't know about it, you're yeah. not alone. And it's okay. Like I know with GTP, I really try to, you know, if I find an old picture of some spot bonding or something, yeah. I'm going to be the first to post it and I, say, yeah. this was my job, you know, yeah. seven years ago. And, uh, wow. uh, and, and so I think that yeah, own it, it. It, you gotta, I have the GTP stickers that say own it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think that that's what, I mean, as a family, right, as tile setters, you're, I've seen your work and I, I looked you up, you know, on Facebook and you do really good oh, work. Thank you, brother. And um, I think that, that, that there's a family out there that really wants to help get younger people in this trade, right? Because it's, exactly. it's, a, it's a pain in the ass trade. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's hard work. So yeah. uh, definitely, um, I think the struggles have just been, I, I wanted to get there really fast. Yeah. I wanted to get to proper yeah. methods and standards the next day. Oh yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it, but I think what people will discover is that if they start, uh, really over prepping their substrates, tuning things up really well, keying in their mortar, directionally trunk. If you start doing those things, you start to kind of develop a, 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 like a rhythm, a way of doing things that make your job more efficient and faster, Yeah. you know? And I yeah. think that people say, how, why are you so fast? Why is the flash so fast? Right. It's because, we, we have a method of doing things and we do not stray from it. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, we, yeah. we we always have our whatever we have. It's out in front of us, and we, it's there to, to grab, and we can do our thing. So, yeah. well, I think well, it, uh, it, to add to that point too, it it sounds like what you've done is you built a um, almost like a conveyor built system within the tile industry, and this is another way to capitalize on your team right. and get to that next job. I mean, one guy's starting a job, uh, you have a prep guy. Yep. And then another guy comes in and installs it. And then another guy finished it grouting. I mean, yeah. why pay your $35, $40 an hour installer to grout yeah. and prep? I mean, it doesn't make sense. You can train somebody to do that within 6 to 12 months. Right, right. The conveyor belt system <laughs> in tile. That's what I'm talking about. You're 100% right. I mean, you know, the conveyor belts work in yeah. factories for a reason. Yeah. So, you know, maybe maybe that is what we have. And, it, and, and it's, it's really worked for us. To be, awesome. to be honest, Jeremy... He'll tell you that he can't do silicone. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, silicone is an art. <laughs> yeah. For and Jeremy, sure. the other for day, sure. Jeremy said, I'm not, no more silicone. Just don't yeah. even let me do it anymore. Yeah. Um, so I think that uh, uh, everybody has things that they're, you know, that they're, they're, they're good at and uh -huh. that they excel at. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what I've found is I've kind of figured out who on my crew is good at what. And right. uh, I make them, you know, that's their strong suit. So I let them do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I try not to get in their way. Yeah. You know, as much as possible, because if I see something that needs to be tuned up, you know, yeah. I, I, I talk about it and I yeah. say, hey, let's let's tune this up a little bit. But for the most part, let them do what they do. That's you know? cool. Yeah. That's cool. For sure. Very nice. Now, good. how are you finding work? How are you marketing, getting your name out there? You know, I, I've never advertised. Really? Um, yeah, it's, it's all word of mouth. Um, yeah. You know, my brother has mentioned a lot that if you get me in front of a customer, yeah. that I, I, I will sell them and I'll get the job. You so know, yeah. you're the salesman. Yeah, most most of the time. Of the I time. mean, I'm the one that has the vocabulary. Uh, you know, for a lot of the industry stuff. Yeah. You know, um, do you wear your sunglasses when you're selling a tile installation job? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, I, I don't. But that's a really great question. Um, you know, I have had cause I used to wear cause I've got something wrong with my left eye and that's okay. why I wear my glasses a lot. Okay. And I used to have these really dark contacts yeah. that I wore yeah. so that I didn't have to wear my glasses, but I look like the devil. <laughs> so I stopped wearing them, but, okay. uh, I definitely don't wear my shades when I'm, when I'm selling a job. Um, cool. but I sell just by, uh, you know, I get a call and I, I go look at the job and I'm very personable. I meet my customers at the, uh, you know, CFM in places to look at materials. I do a lot of design work with yeah. them. Um, so I really, I think the way I've kept myself, you know, relevant in Portland and, and is I'm always, I'm always looking at the next best thing. How can I be faster? What, you know, how can I get certified and yeah. how can I be a weedy pro certified? Right. How can I be Schluter certified? Yeah. I think yeah. having those certifications, walking into a job and having an answer to every drain location, yeah, right? Exactly. Um, that's all stuff. You need to be the answer. Guy. You got to be the yeah, answer. You got to be walking into a job, and and you know they're hiring you to do a job. If you don't have an answer, yeah. they're going to be like, say, "Oh, we'll, we'll ask the plumber." It's right? Like, no, yeah. you tell the plumber what he's supposed to do. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. for sure. So I think I've just uh, I've done really well with, and then I put out good work. Yeah. Right. And how are you? How are you expressing that value to when you're in that sales? You know, you're sitting down with a customer, a potential customer. Yeah. How do you express that value? Yeah, that's a really hard thing to do. Um, yeah. You know, I think a lot of it just comes across in, like, in, I always try to say, listen, I'll give you a lifetime warranty. I'll give you a lifetime warranty because my job is not going to fall apart, yeah. you know? And I try, a lot of the value in a good installation comes with the products that you're using. Yeah. So I try to talk to people about, you know, we use more expensive products. You know, we we try to do things that are going to last forever, yeah. you know? And, and, I, and I also try to let people know that, I mean, this is not a vacation for me. I, I, right. I spend money. I fly yeah. down. I don't like to fly. I fly down to Orlando. Yeah. This is work because I'm here trying to educate myself. You know, yeah. I'm trying to have conversations with guys like you to make myself and my business better. So yeah. um, it, it's, it's, it comes across with customers. That's I think cool. they see that that I'm trying to get more yeah. educated and I'm trying to get yeah. my guys educated. We're trying to do more work. Yeah. You know, I think how, they see that. How long have you been coming to these shows? Uh, this is my second, second coverings. Year. But I've uh, been, it's, I'm three years into shows. I've nice. been to TSPs yeah. uh, and I've been to Surface and Coverings. And, and from that, from those three years, I mean, that's, has that been your biggest growth? Absolutely, or, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think the growth is that I'm doing work now that is, you know, it's much more impressive than it was when I was, back in the day when I was, you know, just doing standard stuff. I think now that, you know, I get around peers, like guys like you that, yeah. and The Flash and, yeah. and, and, these guys that, and you listen, these guys that are just so talented yeah. and it makes me now when I do a job, I'm thinking, 
I want to make that. I want I want people to look at this and just yeah. have a physical reaction that's to cool. it, you know. That's so cool. I think uh, the shows have really helped because I get to build these great relationships. And, and that's what it's all about is these relationships. I mean, you are the average of the five people you hang around. So right, you know what I mean. And and, and we can do that online. You know, you can start there. That's where I start. That's where a lot of us start. But once we start to see, oh. The physical reaction, I mean, you'll never eliminate that. That's yeah. always the most powerful. For sure, yeah. Uh, what advice do you wish you could give yourself back when you were younger, 12 years ago? Oh, man, 12 years ago. Um, man, I, I think that if I had advice, I would say, uh, you know, read the back of the thin set bag. <laughs> Start <laughs> you know, because yeah, yeah. I remember like one of my biggest learning lessons was the tennis elbow I had from mixing a bag of VersaBond way too thick yeah. and putting down backer board. I remember like the next day I called the guy that taught me and I was like, dude, how can I make this go away? And yeah. he was just like, you got to put more water in it, wow. you know? But he yeah. never, you know what he never said? He never said, read the read bag. The, read the bag. <laughs> he never said, read the instructions. And yeah. what's amazing to me is that I never thought to read the bag, right? right? right. So uh, I think that, 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 I think the advice that I, I would give myself 12 years ago is, Read the bag yeah. for sure yeah. and read the box. Okay. Read the label of whatever it is that you're working with. If you think that, that cause we could get into conversations about thin set consistency and things that, that aren't talked about enough. Yeah. You want good coverage, mix your mud a little looser. In yeah. order to do that, fix your substrate. There's so many things that go into putting sure. a tile, uh, you know, an installation together that, that, that you could really dive into and, and talk about those little details. So for sure. the best advice would be, and I've got another one that isn't yeah. talked about enough. Yeah. Pay your taxes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 12 years ago, I wish that I would have been able to grab myself by the balls wow. and say, listen, wow. put 20, 30% away of every yeah. job you do and pay your taxes. I think it's the thing that nobody, it's like the big bad wolf that nobody wants to talk about, yeah. but that a lot of small business owners go through. Yeah. They're not putting money away to pay their taxes. And then they end up getting a letter in the mail or a phone call and it turns into a complete nightmare. So yeah. 12 years ago, Stone Man, pay your taxes. Yeah, right on. <laughs> that is some solid advice right there. Yeah, I think, for sure. I know I've gotten into that habit of saying, oh, I'll catch up after the next job, then I'll put 60%. That's not gonna happen. No, it's never gonna you know happen. 20% I mean? yeah. at a time, 30%, yeah. and that's the truth easy, is, that's doable. It's really great when you come yeah. from this, this, this hourly wage thing and all of a sudden out of nowhere, you get a check in your name for eight grand exactly. for doing a bathroom. You're like, hell yeah, I'm rich. I'm rich, You yeah. know, I'm but the truth it. is, is that you're not, you're yeah. not, you have yeah. debt to pay off. Yeah. And you're going to have a lot more debt to pay off if you don't put some of that into yeah. a tax account. Have you read The Wealthy Contractor? I have or, no. um, or Profit First, I'm sorry. Have you read Profit First? I haven't, by no. my, Okay, Profit First talks about how you should be first taking your profit, of course, like the book, but then but then having like five bank accounts. I mean, it sounds crazy, right. but he's developed a system that works. Account, You go to talk to your CPA and accountant, and it, it, it'll just boggle your mind because they look at numbers completely different. He said, let's just look at the numbers how they are. Here, this guy needs 20%. Your profit, you want 20%, put that away first. Right. The IRS, they're gonna want 40% of your mm -hmm. business. Put that away second. Then you're left with 40% to play with. You know, what's your overhead? Like, right. Put all these things in their proper perspective. Absolutely. First, and that's what you're talking about. Yeah, that's I love a great it. Book it, it, it. It sounds like a good book for Speaking sure. Speaking of books, do you have any recommendations? Or what you know, you I'd like to say that I've read books on business and these things, but I haven't. Yeah. So if I were to recommend a book, I would say, Everybody should listen or read to you know Ready Player One. Okay, <laughs> that's right a really on. great book. That's um, awesome, brother. I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't. You know, I really. That's probably one of my downfalls is that I need to be more educated in the things that you're talking about. Yeah. You know, um, so I do listen to a lot of audio books, and uh, my book recommendation would be Ready Player One. And then there's a really great book called Fearless. Okay, and it's about a, a, a SEAL Team Six Navy SEAL, perfect, named Adam Brown, who. It shows what you're capable of, exactly. and and the things that that, yes. that that there's something inside of all of us that 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 we most of us don't grab right. and run with, right. but it's in there. And um, the book really talks about, you know, he he had a he, he was addicted to to methamphetamines yeah. and drugs, and I don't know if you've read it, but it's no, incredible. I have not. But it, it yeah. talks about his life and the things that he went through to become a member of SEAL Team Six, and so. That book really shows me, and, and every day I, it's, it reminds me that if things are bad and, you, and, and life is really kicking you in the ass, you know, you have to dig a little deeper and find yeah. that something in you that, that gets you up in the morning and tells you to go to work. 
yeah. you know? Um, so Fearless, it's nice. a really great book. Right on. Sure. Fearless. Yeah. That, and, and that is perfect. That is that is where we're going to start our business and our success in life and business is, is right here. Absolutely. I mean, you can't get you can't get anywhere without changing your mindset, getting for your sure. mindset right that yes, you can sell that job for what you need to sell it at. Yeah. You need to believe that. Absolutely. Because then it'll happen. I yeah. mean, it's, it's not, you know, magic, but, but your beliefs turn into actions. For sure. Yeah. So, well, um, listen, thank you so much Absolutely, for taking the time. Man. I love it. What are you looking forward to the most here? Uh, you know, honestly, you got, big, uh, you got a big event tonight. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So no, our events are tomorrow night. Oh, tomorrow uh, yeah, with with Weedy, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. Um, you know, super. Uh, I, I do want to you know say that if if you haven't already, get in touch with your reps. Call your Perfect. reps if you've got questions and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Weedy is obviously a supporter of GTP. Ardex has really done a lot. We've been doing a lot with IQ tools lately and, okay. and the dustless technology because I think everybody needs to wear a mask. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those are all really important things. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously I was really looking forward to rapping with you a little bit. Right so on. thank you for the opportunity. Um, and, uh, you know, just hanging out with friends, you know, and, yeah. and, uh, and, and, and walking the show and, and, um, you know, giving away a bunch of swag and stickers and, right uh, you know, doing things like that. That's what I come here for. I mean, um, and you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a bachelor kind of, okay. so, um, it's like, it's, easy for me to, to get away and do these things, but, nice. uh, yeah. it's always nice to get home and, um, well, it takes you know. commitment and planning and yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, priorities. I, I, I'm, I'm super stoked to be here and, uh, obviously, uh, looking forward to more conversations and trying to grow my business as much as possible. Yeah. You know, right on Jason. Well, we appreciate you. Thank I appreciate you, brother. you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, man. All right. Take care. Good talking to you, boss. All right, friends, this is tip number three in the Tile Money Tips, which is sponsored by Ladecree, and I have Ron Nash with me here. And today we're going to continue into the, the sessions of um, negotiation, and we have the strategy of concession making. Ron, thank you for joining me. I'm looking forward to today's tip. All right, awesome. Um, you'll notice that I'm wearing the same clothing. <laughs> because I can't afford to buy new stuff. <laughs> All right, so... Session number three, here we go. Um, the strategy of concession making. I want you to lose your gut feel. And I want you to start thinking strategy. Mm -hmm. I want you to develop systems that you're comfortable with and processes that you can say, you know what, when people ask me to lower my price or if they ask me, you know, if I can do better than that, if I can do a better price, then I go into this strategy. Okay. Cool. Okay, here we go. I'm going to give you some tips. Um, I have two major ones, but understand that I want you to do a mental flip right now, today. Right now, you're going to stop thinking like this. When someone says, can you do better than that? Yeah. Or can you lower your price? Rather than thinking, what do I have to concede or what do I have to give up to get this deal? I want you to switch it to, how can I make this a better opportunity for both of us? Nice. Yeah. If you do that, immediately you're going to be more creative. You're going to be happier. You're going to, you're, that spirit of cooperativeness will go back. And remember what I said, what makes a good negotiator? And in tip number one, well, preparation, planning, problem solving, mm -hmm. you know, you got your individual initiative. This is that way that you can go and show people you got individual initiative. Okay, ready? Here we go. I have rules, eight of them. Actually, there are probably, there are probably a hundred of them, but I'm going to give you eight of, eight of the ones that wound up in my notes. Okay, ready? Rules of concession making. Number one, leave room to negotiate. Mm -hmm. In your pricing, leave room to negotiate if you know or even have an inkling that you're going to have this happen. Okay? Um, if you don't give yourself any room and, or you don't have any strategy that you have any room, then you wind up in a situation where you're going to get to take it or leave it, yeah. or you're going to get to a, a deadlock much, much faster than you need to. And by the way, you're, even though you may be thinking, well, people want my best, what they call it, the bottom line up front, my, my best price up front, people really don't want that. <laughs> they say that they do sometimes, but they really don't. What they want is someone who will work with them. And, mm -hmm. and just the concept of working with them creates a relationship and will help you do better on deals. So here we go. Leave room. You don't have to leave 20%, but leave room. Yeah. Secondly, 
be stingy. Okay. <laughs> so if you are making deals with people, make small concessions because small concessions gets the psychological ball rolling. Okay. I'm going to give you an example of something that's on TV all the time. Um, you guys ever see American Pickers? Sure. Yeah. Right. Have you ever heard that he's like, oh, I'm going to break the seal? He'll say, I'm going to break the seal on this one. I'm not, you know, I'm, I like this right. rigid coffee mug from 1902, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm going to overpay a little bit on this one to get the seal broken. And then, yeah. then more, more deals come, come down the road. Okay. Well, that's, that's fine, but you can't do that unless you're a little bit st stingy and make little concessions as you go. Sometimes that's all it takes. Sometimes just making little concessions, signals to a, to a buyer, um, this guy's willing to work with me. He's willing to be a partner of mine. That's a good indication, especially in North America. And Americans, they like to do this. Mm -hmm. um, as much as we think we don't negotiate on things, we do all the time. All right? Um, that's rule number two. Be a little stingy. Rule number three, watch out for patterns. All right? So if you work with someone in a serial negotiation, meaning over and over again, you're doing the same thing. I work for a builder. I do all of his showers, whatever. If you wind up doing the same pattern of negotiation, eventually that becomes the new standard that you start off with. Yeah. I would definitely not do that. So for example, if every time I work with Luke, I give him a 20% discount right off the gate, guess what he's going to do? Awesome. The next time he's just going to, exactly, you're going to be ready for it and you're going to think about that. So don't do that. Yeah. Tip number four, on major issues and major negotiations, try not to be the first to concede. Mm -hmm. You will do this by shutting up. Yeah. Watch what happens. Luke, tell me you got to do better than that on your price. You got to do better than that on your price, Ron. I just can't pay that much. Mm. Is, is there any way you can do better, Ron? You know what? I was thinking, how much? You see how this works? Yeah. Just by listening and providing that little bit of pregnant pause, the tension that builds up on that will cause a person to negotiate. Yeah. If I immediately go, okay, I understand, yes, I'm going to give you a better deal then you may wind up having a better deal at the end, but at the same time, you've, you've lost some of the power we're going to talk about later. Um, you've lost a little bit. Okay, so well, what, it, what it did is it made me think, Ron's not willing to negotiate, or I'm asking, you know, he's already hit his bottom. Or, you yeah, know, exactly. It made, me, it made my mind start to think, and then, I, and then I blurted something else out. So That's right, exactly. And that is usually a very good thing. Now, you can also smile. And I highly suggest being personable as you do it. Yeah. You can also, I taught you about a flinch earlier. Mm -hmm. You can be like, mm, say what? I like doing that. Yeah. Um, but the point is, is it's a happy thing, not a, I cannot believe you're asking me for a better price. Yeah. You know, okay, that, uh, Angry. you got to control these things, right? Yeah. All right. Um, do, tip number five. Do not concede tip for tat. Now, I know half you guys are giggling right now because I said tit for tat. <laughs> but what that means is, okay, a lot of times we get into, okay, you give me this, I'll give you this. You give me this, I'll give you this. You give me this, I'll give you this. And it winds up being a really long series of things that's even hard to do. I avoid that if at all possible. Mm -hmm. How I avoid that is I go, okay, what's the real issues? Yeah. Let's talk about the real issues. I do that a lot. And, and then, you know, Understand, we're also not just talking about money. We're talking about all kinds of things. Right. Tip number six, don't split the difference if at all possible. And people think negotiation, they immediately think, oh, this is good. I'm going to teach you how to split the difference. Yes. <laughs> there would be no, what? None, of, none of the books would be written if it was just as easy as splitting the difference. But think about this one thing. If a guy says, hey, let's just meet in the middle. 80-20 um, is not meeting in the middle, it's 30% better than meeting in the middle for you. Mm -hmm. So how about you just say, I'll tell you what, rather than meeting in the middle, I'll take X percent off or 2% off or 5% off. But the point is, is that meeting in the middle winds up being a, a, a very quick way to do it. And also here's the psychological part of this. If you just quickly meet in the middle, people are more dissatisfied at the end of the deal than people who say, an 80-20 arrangement or, or a, I'm going to give you 10% off and that's the best I can do. 
they actually feel better about the work that they put in to get that price. Mm. So you'll actually make a better deal by not meeting in the middle. Hmm. And it would be better for you. Everybody right? will feel better in the end is what you're saying. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so tip number seven, try to avoid massive con concessions under time pressure. Mm. Now, I will tell you as a general contractor, this is a dirty trick I used to use all the time, right? I'd be like, hey, look, you got to have your, your bids to me and they got to be in on Wednesday at two o'clock. Yeah. Now, there's a big difference if there's a legal, like a public opening or, you know, like a, a, um, a legal reason why you have to have a bid in at one o'clock. Sure. All right. That, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who make time pressure. Like you have got to get this to me by one o'clock. Yeah. I always like to counter that with going, what happens if I get it to you at 102? <laughs> and usually that, that creates an interesting conversation. Now, and a lot of times you'll learn things in discovery that way. They'll say, look, I'm trying, look, I, I'm trying to get my work done uh, by Friday or whatever. And I can say, hey, how about I talk about this portion? I can get you that by one. And then we'll come back and talk about this other portion later. What that does is it, it gives you a little escape valve for making big mistakes. Mm -hmm. As time, and we'll talk about power in future ones, in future tips, but time is a, a very powerful thing. And if I can get a seller to crunch himself down on time, typically speaking, they make math errors. And those math errors are usually in my advantage as a buyer. Um, so avoid time pressure. Yeah. And then the eighth final tip, be creative. Mm -hmm. Be creative. Things that are not money usually close the deal. In fact, price is usually on the list of four, five, six things, six items down of why people buy. Yeah. Okay. The science of buying, first of all, everybody says everybody hates to be sold, but they love to buy. That's a Jeffrey Gittimer phrase. Yeah. Matter of fact, it's right. Here we go. This book right here. Uh, Jeffrey, that's a Jeffrey Gittimer phrase. People hate to be sold, but they love to buy. Well, if you can be creative, people are going to love to buy from you. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? They love to buy happy buy from people, and they become friends with creative people. They become friends with buy, buy, you know, people that they buy and do a lot of transactions with. So, all right, eight tips, nice. eight rules. Leave room, be stingy, watch out for patterns. Don't concede first. Don't concede tit for tat. I'm not saying I never have. <laughs> um, uh, don't split the difference. Avoid massive, massive concessions under time pressure and be creative. Right and then on. the final thing I'd say is have a good day. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ron, so much. And friends, the next uh, tile money tip is going to be all about funny money. So I, I'm going to enjoy uh, hearing about that with Ron and talk to you soon. Have a good day.